I'm Tony, and today we're going to make an easy microwavable bowl. And I'm going to use these really cool fabrics, the uh, the Stonehenge and some Asian fabric I found. This is, a, as you can see, a scrap. Uh, this is an easy, easy project that you can do yourself. Now, this is not a bowl that you can put food and liquids and things in. This is a bowl that you take your your bowl that you have your soup or your, your vegetables or whatever you want to microwave, your pasta, uh, and you put your, your bowl of food in the microwavable bowl you put it in the microwave, you heat it up, you pull it out, and then you can grab it by the microwavable bowl so you don't burn your hands. Uh, it's a super easy project that anyone can do if you can use a sewing machine. Uh, and some of the tutorials, unfortunately, out there make it look a, li a little hard. So I have broken it down to the easiest way to do this. And let's get started. Oh, I almost forgot. Easy, quick gifts. So if you want to whip something out with some of your scraps, yeah. Okay, so now let's get started. So I almost made a huge mistake. Um, I originally, I was going to use the Asian fabric and this fabric. Whenever I was setting everything up and ironing and cutting my squares and getting everything ready for the next step, I looked closely at this fabric and realized there's metallic thread in here. I can't use this. Metallic thread will melt in a microwave. So instead, I decided to pull out the um, the leftover Deadpool scrap fabric that I had, uh, and I'm going to make a microwave bowl for my brother for the holidays. Uh, so it is extremely important. Number one, your fabrics need to be 100% cotton. 100% cotton fabric. Now I've got everything listed down below with all the materials, but that you cannot use any other fabrics for the same reason of what I just said. Um, anything that is not cotton will melt or have serious issues if you put it into the microwave. Uh, by the same token, you can only use 100% cotton thread. So 100% cotton thread. Do not use a polyester thread. Use a 100% cotton thread. You don't want your threads to melt in the microwave. The batting. Do we? Do you see a, a routine? A um, a, anything similar with everything I'm saying? 100% cotton batting. Uh, I don't know how wool would hold up, but I would not take the chance. 100% cotton batting. Uh, do not use a cotton poly blend, just 100% cotton batting. All right, have I, have I made that very clear? Everything 100% cotton. Okay, that's the only thing that you absolutely have to do for this entire thing in order for it to be safe for the microwave. Uh, all right, so what you wanna do is cut two pieces of batting. Notice how I have two, not just one because we need to have enough structure to our bowl. So two pieces of cotton batting, uh, 10 inches by 10 inches. We also need two pieces of cotton fabric, 10 inches by 10 inches, okay? Step number one, we're going to take our batting and our fabric, and we're gonna line it up. Now, of course, this black, is a solid so it has no right and wrong sides and we're taking that and lining it up the batting to the wrong side of the fabric okay let's turn this over perfect and then you want to take pins and put pins in each of the sides or clips clips would also be okay for this step and all the way around for both of them. And then we're going to sew these together. Now, how we're going to sew them together is along the diagonal. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to fold it directly in half. Fing so we're gonna finger press this really good and open this up and you can see my diagonal line. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna sew from the edge to the edge. Now you can also draw a line on here. In fact, 
I'm going to show you that. So you can see this diagonal as line there to there. So you can do that. Let me do the other side. Now, if you want to draw a line, make sure you draw it either as a uh, on the batting side or as a washable side on here. So make sure whatever you draw on here is going to be nice and washable. And there you are. So you can see it easier on this side if you only want to do the folding. So that's what I'm going to do to both of these. I'm going to fold these and then I'm going to draw a line from corner to corner and corner to corner on each of these and come back and show them to you. Oh, I almost forgot. I'm going to be using a this color gray so it goes with the bowl, but you can still see my lines at the same time for both the black and for the batting. Now your diagonals do not need to be perfect. You see how my corner right there, I'm kind of off a bit. And down here, I really don't have a lot of the, uh, the fabric in with the batting. It's fine. As long as you're generally in the right area, you're good to go. Um, so now what we need to do is we need to put some darts in here so that the bowl kind of stands up. So this is how we do the darts. We're going to take this, uh, we're going to fold it over just like that. So we'll fold everything over so it's exactly in half. Oh, and look at that. My, uh, I am definitely not, didn't sew it right at the line. Maybe I should have drawn something on there. Eh, it's okay. Remember, this is not a project where you have to be perfect. It's, it's definitely fine the way it is. So this is how we're going to do an easy dart. You're going to take your acrylic ruler or, um, or your measuring, whatever you're using. We're going to put it right up against that corner. Make sure that everything is nicely lined up. Okay. Now we're going to move it down just a touch and we're going to mark one inch from the corner along the top. Okay. Then you're going to move it back up again and then move it to the left a little bit and mark two inches down. Okay. So one inch from the top, two inches down. All right, then you're going to take your straight edge or acrylic ruler and you're going to draw a line from the top to the bottom. So from that one inch to that two inch. Okay, so there's our line just like that. Now make sure you're doing this on the batting side. Do not put, fold it together on the um, on the uh, the other side, flip it over so that you see the the right side. So make sure you're drawing this on the batting side. Okay, so we're gonna do the other end. So same exact thing. I'm up in the corner. I'm gonna move it down a little bit, and I'm gonna mark one inch from the end, and then I'm gonna move it over a little bit and mark two inches from the top, and then. Let's draw a line from corner to corner. There we go. And do the same thing to the other side. So you notice how there's that. Now, I don't mean the other side on here. I mean the other piece. So the other bowl, the other part of the bowl, you want to fold it over and let's fold this in half oh this one's a little bit better although my i'm still off just a touch but that's okay you don't have to be perfect on this this is a quick and easy thing that you can make um, that does not need to be perfect at all uh, there are some no oh, make sure before you move it over make sure remember move this back up again and then move it over uh, there are some things that you do have to be perfect on. This is not one of them. Okay, so let's do that and draw our line and then turn it around. Do the same thing. <coughs> so down. <coughs> oh, sorry. 
line and then draw the line. All right, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these both and I'm gonna move, go to my sewing machine and I'm going to sew the lines right onto there. So this right here is your sew line. Now you can put a clip in here, you can put a pin, you can do whatever you like, or you could just leave it alone. I'm not gonna put any pins or clips or anything. I'm gonna leave it alone. So we're gonna sew all four of these and then I'll come back and show you the next step. Now we wanna trim this excess bulk off because whenever we have our bowl, we don't want the excess bulk to actually be sitting inside of our bowl and having those issues, right? That's a, that's a whole bunch of excess fabric. So how we trim this is we're going to use our straight edge. Normally you would do a quarter inch, but in this case, we are going to do an eighth of an inch. So just an eighth of an inch, and that is going to reduce that bulk, okay? So an eighth of an inch all the way around. So there's our quarter. So let's go in a little bit more. And there's our eighth. There we are. So there's our quarter. And a little bit more in. That's our eighth. And after we trim this, you can probably guess what that next step is going to be. Oh, I almost just did a quarter automatically. Eighth. There we go. Our next step. As you can see, our darts in there is going to be turning it to the other side. So now make sure that you line these up. Let's make sure that we try to make this as flat as possible because this is the trick, right? The trick is going to be to make sure that everything gets lined up. Now, it doesn't have to be perfect. As you saw, whenever I was sewing my lines, they're not quite straight. That's fine. As long as they're there, it's going to work, okay? This should not be a project that should stress you out at all. This should be a fun and easy, let's get it done project. All right, so let's move this down. So here's one, and let's move this over. There's two, and we're drawing our line from corner to corner and do the same exact thing to this side and let's open this up fold it in to these two so i'm going to finish drawing my lines sewing it trimming one eighth of an inch from my line and then i'll come back and i'll show you how we start to assemble this all right we have our top and our bottom fabric now when we open these up you should be able to have a nice little bowl. You see how it sits just like that? Let's check our other one and see if we've done that one right. Yep, and our darts are allowing us to do that. So now it's time for assembly. So what we're going to do is we're going to take one of them, doesn't matter which one, we're gonna turn it the other way. So flip those darts out that other way, and we're going to put it in. So we have right side to right side. And what you wanna do is make sure you line these corners up. Uh, you can use a clip or you can use pins. It doesn't matter which one, but you do wanna make sure that you, make, that you have all of this lined up all the way around. Make sure everything goes there. Beautiful, beautiful. Just like that. So we're gonna circle this all the way around and pin this, and then we're going to sew them together using a quarter inch seam. So after we pin all this, I'm going to sew all the way around using a quarter inch seam. Now, when I'm sewing this, I wanna make sure I can flip this inside out. So I'm going to leave about a three inch opening in one of the side areas. Do not leave your opening at a corner. The corners are important that you really get those in there. Your three inch opening should be right along this area here, like we're all on one of these sides, but have at least one inch sewn in on each corner, okay? So I'm going to pin the rest of this. I'm going to sew mine with a quarter inch all the way around, leaving a three inch opening, and then we'll come back and show you. All right, 
I have sewn a quarter inch all the way around the edging, leaving a opening right here for flipping. Now you notice how I did secure these stitches. So I back stitched back and forward at the beginning and the end of my stitching. That's to prevent the stitches from opening as I flip this whole thing over. Now, before I flip this, I want to trim these corners. And this prevents bulk whenever you flip this inside out. When I ever used to do these projects, I never used to trim the corners. I was like, oh, well, I'm afraid that these seams are going to come undone. As long as you don't trim the corner near this thread right here, they're not going to come undone. It's perfectly okay. If you leave them together, then all of your corners are going to look weird because they're going to be super bulky. Okay, so now comes the fun part of turning this whole thing inside out. Come on, get in there. There we go. Okay. Now we have a mess. No kidding. It is now, if you have little fingers, you can put your fingers in there and you can pop these corners out. Uh, there's also tools to help you do this, such as the point and turn from Clover, which actually helps poke out all of these little corners. Let me get the other one in there. I'm lucky I got little tiny fingers so I can get in there and poke them out for the most part. Although I am going to go back over with the point and turn just to make sure. Let's see. Let's get this in here. There we go. Oh, yeah. Look at that next corner. And let's do this one. Now, make sure as you're poking your corners, you do not poke through your corners. It's one thing to have nice corners. It's another thing to poke a hole in your project and having to start over again. So be careful you don't apply too much pressure and actually poke a hole in it, okay? So now we've got this mess right here. So what we wanna do, oops, I'm gonna go this way. Let's figure out which way we wanna have our bowl. And we're gonna take these and we're going to turn this under. Let's make sure everything is all nice and straight. So we're gonna turn this under a quarter inch. There we go. Let's get those seams in there. There we are. And it's right there. And then that is where I'm going to start my sewing. So I'm going to do a stitch all the way around here. And that's going to help it keep its form. So it's not going to completely undo, undo itself and do one of these things and become a big old blob again. So doing a stitch all the way around the edge, about an eighth of an inch from the end is going to keep that in place. So in fact, you know what, let me put a pin in here just to make sure that this stays as I do my stitching. There we go. So let's put some pins in here because I'm afraid by the time I get this over the sewing machine, it's gonna wanna pop back out again. There we are, now that's looking a lot nicer. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. You'll see the stitch all the way around the side and then we'll come back and I'll show you the finished project. And here is our microwavable bowl. That's it. That's our microwavable bowl. Isn't that awesome looking? So at this point now, if you have a bowl or a dish or something to put in here, you can then use these corners to pick your dish up and put it inside of your microwave. And then when it's finished, grab it by the edges, pick it up and bring it back. Now, the nice thing about these, it's reversible. So let's say if you use two fabrics that you really like, the nice thing about the darts and about the way it's made is that you can actually use any side you want for the inside or the outside. And that is how you make a microwavable bowl holder. See, Let's take the bowl, put it in there, put your food in there, do the things, put it in the microwave, pick it up by here. You're not touching your bowl and burning your fingers. Hopefully you learned something today, how to make a microwavable bowl holder 
thing that it's reversible. Uh, <laughs> uh, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like this video, uh, follow my YouTube as well as Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, my quite nerdy quilters Facebook group, and of course Twitch where I sew live and you can interact and ask me questions.